and welcome to Swangan. I'm your host, Dennis Allen. Inuvialuit have always entertained themselves with traditional sport. Last winter, two men from Tuck traveled to Africa to demonstrate Inuit-style wrestling. From what we saw, Dennis Raddy and Lucky Pokiak enjoyed their trip. Welcome to Swangan, our strength, right here on APTN. It's about a 13 or 14 hour day of flying, basically. It's a long, long trip, especially for the boys coming in because they came in about the day before we took off from Montreal, so very long for them. Here we are in Niamey, Niger, capital of Niger, for the 2005 Francophonie Games. Uh, we just came in after a couple of long flights from Montreal through to Casablanca, then from Casablanca straight through to Niemi. We're in the Athletes' Village now and let's take a little tour. First on the tour, Mr. Lucky Pokiak from Taktiaktak, Northwest Territories, one of our traditional Inuit wrestlers on this venture. What's your thoughts and feelings about everything so far? Well, hey, check that out first. On the wall. Pretty interesting here. It's, yeah, this is different. It's gonna be pretty exciting. Look forward to it. Excellent. All right. Well, let's take ourselves a tour inside our little villa. Home away from home. Our home away from home. So here's the front entrance to our little fridge. This is our front door view. Coming through here. Got a little kitchen area in there. And coming through. This is Room for Lucky and Dennis, Mr. Dennis Raddy from Tuktiak Tuk. I love him living in the brain this here. Just like home, eh? Just like home. It's good times. <laughs> Looking forward to it, actually. It's no hot water, so we're all showering with some cold water. Should be good. The temperature now is like 30 degrees, 35 degrees, so we're doing pretty good here. This is Mr. Tony Etuk from Coral Harbor, Nunavut. Already relaxing. You don't do that. <laughs> Already relaxing. <laughs> <laughs> and then Mr. Joseph Nakulak, already passed out. We have in our room Mr. Michael Smith, already passed out, feeling the heat. It's not the heat, it's a, it's a plane ride. <laughs> or the plane ride. We just got uh, air conditioning last night, loving it. <laughs> nice and cool in the morning, nice to wake up without a uh, big puddle under you. <laughs> right on. And big Mr. Lucky. <laughs> Pretty good, the air conditioning is good then. I don't know, we're looking forward to the opening ceremony. Right on. There it goes. The street along the Athletes Village, we're just going out to uh, take some photos of the boys here. Here we are, right at the entrance to the Athletes Village. These are all the little minibuses that took us where we needed to go. The boys are getting ready for their uh, photo op in front of the flags, and they're going to do one in front of the gate as well. Oh, Dennis, you seem to be uh, moving around a little differently than usual. 
Yeah, can you uh, little, uh, let us know what happened here? A little practice uh, injury. <laughs> Before the competition started, a couple of the boys had been playing frisbee over by the cafeteria. Dennis was going for a long pass and really into the game and stepped into a pothole and ended up twisting his ankle. We haven't even started yet. We're going to opening ceremonies now and I'm already on crutches. <laughs> So Joseph, Hi. why don't you tell us a little story about your fancy shoes there? Uh, <laughs> yeah, these are actually socks. I took them on the plane. Come on our way here. I needed black shoes. I only got white shoes. I need I needed dirt shoes, so I had to put them on. <laughs> He was a really funny guy, you know, he was really friendly, got along great with all the guys. Uh, and it was good to have sort of a younger guy with us because he was very excited about being there, very energetic, put a lot of energy forward. Uh, we definitely got more of an experience with him being there because he helped arrange for a lot of side trips and if we didn't have an interpreter there, we probably wouldn't have been able to, to accomplish that. He was great, it's nice to have him there. countries that are here. See a few of the signs. More over here. You ever been in an opening ceremony for anything before? Yes. Yeah? Uh, indigenous games. Indigenous games? Victoria. First opening ceremonies for the other first, camera? First opening ceremonies. Awesome. I want big ones like this anyway. In the back, following up in the rear, we got Team Canada, Quebec. In the blue shirts. Getting there. <laughs> Starting to head in. Here we go now. I tell you, it's pretty wild. First time in front of a big audience like this. It's awesome. When we come back, more from Africa, where two men from Tuck are demonstrating Inuit-style wrestling. You're watching Swangon, Our Strength, right here on APTN. Welcome back to Swang on Our Strength and more from Africa where two men from Tuck are demonstrating Inuit style wrestling right here on APTN. It was definitely exciting, uh, all the different cultures that were there because a lot of the teams were bringing uh, sort of the cultural clothing and traditional aspects of their own countries. To the game some teams even had people playing instruments as they were coming in, they had drummers and people playing like homemade xylophones, things like that. Some teams even had dancers. <laughs> We were given the expectation not to expect something of the quality of, say, the, the Olympic Games, but uh, in my mind it was great. It, they really showcased their own culture there and they really put on a show for, for the people who were there. It was good. Uh, 
pour un programme de développement de coopération. C'est un petit programme de coopération bilatéral qui va être financé au fil des années. Mais c'est quand même un programme. We wanted to sort of highlight the culture a little bit before, so actually the night before this we did our sort of preparation for the opening of how we were going to lead into the actual wrestling demonstration. Rather than just going out there and, and just wrestling, the boys really wanted to do that and really try to incorporate something like the uh, Arctic sports in there. So now we're just getting ready and Michael is, is doing some uh, preliminary introductory work. So here we are in the back and we're sort of acting out uh, that traditional hunter-gatherer type of lifestyle and, and people being nomadic, you know. So here we have, uh, you know, Tony's grabbing a seal and Joseph there on the right is skinning a caribou. Uh, Lucky as well had just shot a caribou with a bow and arrow and he's skinning it up now. So the boys are, are doing their thing. Then it shows them sort of carrying things around and they're, they're living the nomadic lifestyle, uh, wandering the land and uh, as you can see towards here, we all start sort of coming together in the center, and this was sort of the traditional gatherings that happened where a lot of the traditional games were played, including the, the Inuit style wrestling. So, so that's what's being described to the people right now. So the people are coming together and they're all greeting each other and, and glad to see each other. And now we have the traditional storytelling, which is also part of the gathering. So we had Tony who was actually talking in Inuktitut at this point. And he was trying to yell as loud as he could for people to hear him, but uh, unfortunately you couldn't really hear him in the stands. But uh, we had Tony and Joseph coming up with stories like the, their first caribou hunt, things, something like that, and trying to tell it in Inuktitut. And Tony's quite nervous, if you can't tell. He was uh, really having a hard time the day before thinking of a story to tell, and, and he was quite uh, stage, stage uh, shy to be up there <laughs> speaking. That's great. So the traditional stories now have been told and then we get into uh, doing some uh, Arctic sports. So nice. the boys really wanted to incorporate this somehow and, and demonstrate this part of their culture. So we just sort of added it in as some of the other traditional games that were played and, and had the boys just uh, showing a few of those things. So here we actually are starting the wrestling now. So one arm goes over top of the shoulder and the other arm goes underneath the armpit there and you have to lock up your hands in the back. Once your hands are locked, you can't let them go. And so your head goes on the side uh, with, the shoulder, with the arm over the, your opponent's shoulder. Then the purpose of this now is once they say ati, means that you start wrestling and basically you have to throw your opponent down to the ground on their back. And traditionally there were no weight classes. So the biggest guy from one, I guess, clan could wrestle the smallest guy from the other clan. <laughs> and typically the, the, the home team per se would would put their best wrestler forward and he would just continuously wrestle the visiting people constantly until uh, someone would beat him. So here we're going through some of the rules about how their grip is and how their body position is when they start and then d telling people that you, there's no using of the legs so you can't trip people with your legs, you can't use your legs at all for this, it's, it's totally an upper body strength type of thing. And here we're telling them that if your grip breaks, traditionally they would just restart. Uh, at the Arctic Winter Games though, the rule they use is if, your grip, if you break your grip, you lose that round and mm -hmm. they, they do a best two out of three rounds. So, but we're sort of going by the more traditional rules here. So now we get the two groups together and we're going to uh, have a little wrestle off against each other. So, so just trying to demonstrate to people, uh, you know, moving around, getting body position on your opponent, trying to, you know, you can lift people up throw them over and we sort of acted this out while uh, Mike was ta telling people about it and then when he got to a certain point we just sort of would let one person uh, toss the other one just to make it more dramatic so yeah. Joseph gives me the big toss and then Lucky uh, bear hugs Tony down to the ground. So once we did that then we actually did a real competition where we would actually actually wrestle against each other in the traditional style. And then the winner would stay in in sort of the traditional way. As long as you're winning, you, you would stay in. So here we have Lucky on the left there and Tony uh, in the front now, the smaller one. It's a real match here. Let's see who wins. One of these boys are going to fight the next one. This style of wrestling, it just evolved across the north? Like, is it an Eastern-specific thing, or it's... 
Uh, it was sort of something that was done all across the north. The different regions had their own variations. Uh, in some regions, they wouldn't actually have their hands locked up behind the back like that. They'd actually have one over top and one could go around the waist. Or uh, they would just have different variations uh, on this type of thing. But it was something that was done uh, at least across North America and into Greenland and stuff. So here you can see a big guy like me in the traditional sense could wrestle a little guy like Tony even though I outweigh him by probably uh, 70 or 80 pounds. In re regular wrestling today you wouldn't have that type of thing, there's the weight classes. So in the wrestling there's, there's sort of two main things you can do, the, what you just saw there was the bear hug that Tony did, otherwise you can do sort of a lift and twist where you would lift up your opponent and, and twist them and throw them towards the back. So there's sort of another variation of a bear hug, just sort of taking them straight backwards. So now we have Joseph on the left there, wrestling against Lucky on the right. So the other thing they do is when you're actually about to land, they do allow for you to uh, break your grip to, to, to brace your fall at least in the new rules. So there would be a lift and a twist where you lift the opponent up and you would sort of take them back and twist them over. Those are sort of basically the two main moves you would do and little variations among those. So now we sort of open it up for anyone in the audience to come in and, and try it with us. So uh, a lot of people were reluctant, but you know, they kind of, hey, they sort of got excited about it, but uh, they didn't really know who to, who to bring in. And then they were about to, uh, close it off because no one was coming and then one of the officials on the table, the, I think the organizer for the event, uh, encouraged one of the, the Niger wrestlers to come in and wrestle us. And we found out later that he was one of their national champions. It's quite a tall guy, he was about six foot four, six foot five, I think. <laughs> so, so you can see with him, because he's so tall, he has to bend over farther, which puts him at the advantage because he is backside is out a little bit further, yeah. which is a more defensive position to be in, as opposed to being sort of more straight up. Mm. Yeah, he ended up going through all the boys and then I ended up <laughs> wrestling him at the end. And I, I almost had him too, but uh, he broke his grip at the end, so we had to restart because of that. Otherwise, I would have beat him. <laughs> <laughs> How did you feel when you first went up against him when you first started? He was very tall. Uh, he was probably about half a foot taller than I was, so uh, he had to bend over quite a bit as far as uh, to get into position, which gave him a bit of an advantage when you're, you're bent over more and you can sort of get, stick your butt out a little further. It puts you in a, in a defensive position right away. So he had a bit of an advantage from that. <laughs> but he was also pretty strong and, and pretty good. <laughs> Thank you to the Delta Demons wrestling team. They went to Africa to demonstrate Inuit style wrestling at the International Francophone Games. When we come back, Inuit lessons from Anna Elisiak of Aklavik, right here on APTN. Welcome back to Swang on Our Strength and Inuit Lessons with Anna Elisiak of Aklavik. You're watching Swang on Our Strength right here on APTN. Okay, and pillow. Pillow? Akihi. Okay. Akihi. Uh, ak Akihi. Okay. Akihi. 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 And same thing, like lots from the throat. Eh? Mm. It has to, most everything comes from the throat. Eh? Mm. And because when you speak English, it's like you're lazy. You're just coming from the tongue, eh? Yeah. So, so this, these are all stuff that you have to learn. Mm. So, uh, uh, so this one is for, yeah. so this is for, for, it's called a yoke for carrying water pails. You know that thing they put across their back? It says something right here. Akirun. Akirun. This, this is not real Arake, Akeraun. Oh, okay. Akeraun. 
You know, uh, I never uh, heard that word for a long time. Because okay. I never known it. Well, maybe, maybe. Akeraun. Mm. It's something that you yeah carry. You, carry. you use it for carrying. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so Akeraun. this this dictionary is when people were still probably lots of people were still living out in the bush and they were. Or elders gave them those uh, words, I guess. Elders gave huh? them them words. Okay, yeah. so these a lot of these words are, are people don't use them anymore because yeah. they don't live out on the land and they, and they, uh, we live in town, so we don't have to carry water or we don't have to carry anything yeah, anymore. Yeah, that's right. right. Yeah. So, so, akiran. 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 K is ki. Okay. Akiran. Ki. And the R is ra. Ra. And the um, R is a rolling R, mm. so, so that's that. So, so uh, bread dough. Uh, 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 Akutak. Oh, okay. Akutak. 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 And that's what you 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 would say that word every day if you're making bread. Mm. So Akutak. And Akutak. Akutak. And uh uh okay. Akutak mixed food. A kuchak, mixed food salad. A kuchak. Okay. A kuchak. That's is that a new word? Like, cause they never had salad, in, <laughs> you know, they never. No, were, it's uh, all mixed food. Well, just mixed different kind yeah. of food, like uh, caribou and mm. geese or whatever. If they made yeah. some mm -hmm. kind of dish or whatever, or if you had it all out. A kuchak, yeah. Okay. A mixed food. Okay. Mm. And then to mix something up. A kuchirok. A kuchirok. A kuchirok. Mm. Okay, a kuchirok. A kuchirok is uh, to, mixing. To mix something is. Yeah. To mix uh, something is a kuchirok. Mm. Okay, and where we were here? I'll just make, take that off. Uh, mix is stirs. Uh, mixing bowl. A kuchivik. A kuchivik. Okay, a kuchivik. Mm. A kuchivik. And what if you had two mixing bowls? There's a tea. And a kuchivik, uh, K and T, that all come in with one, or two, two or more. More, okay. Okay. So if you had two mixing bowls, what a would kuchivik. you say? A kuchivik. Oh. Uh, or this time it uh, two uh, two ice. A kuchivik. Okay. A kuchivik. There's more than the I. Uh, becomes two. Oh, I see. And, okay. Uh, there's always a. So there's lots of rules too, eh? Mm. Like it's like any language. It's like English language has got lots of rules too, mm. right? Well, that was our show for this week. Kuyinak, Dautik Dwa Kafi, Swang and Mick. Until next time, I'm your host, Dennis Allen. Before we leave, here's one more song from Andy Kimmick Zana with an old time gospel song, Ilani Lu. As I journey day by day, what temptation comes to you, and you He will take you by the hand, bring you to the promised land, and you hear by the faith calling you, calling you, calling you, and you hear by the faith calling you. He will take you by the hand, bring you to the promised land, and you hear. As you stray from the home, there is trouble in your soul. Then you hear God's faith calling you. He will take you by the hand, to give you the promised land. Then you hear God's faith calling you. Calling you, calling you. And you hear God's faith calling you. He will take